Hello, this is Kevin Stacy, um, and in this video, I'm going to cover very briefly how the, the framework I've written works. Um, I'll be using my demo program as the example for that. If uh, I have to repeat anything or say anything wrong, I'm going to apologize in advance. It is 11.20 p.m., and I obviously work today, and I'm continuing that for this. But uh, this should be a brief overview. Imagine it'll take 15-20 minutes at most. So let's get started. Alright, so the first thing to understand is references. Um, these are really like a struct in procedural programming languages. Uh, I'm just going to bring a couple of these up here. So we get a zone reference. We'll have a device reference. Conference cam. Let's bring up cell lighting reference and then a reference list. Okay. So here we have, we'll start with our reference list. Um, well, actually, let's start with the things that are common among this and what a reference is. In a, any given project, you're going to give something a name that's human readable for people to use. As you can see, we have room 301, which is a room name, video camera, which is a device name, uh, room 301 again. And then we have here, because that's the zone, and then we have lighting, um, which is, of course, you know, a, a utility type. So you can see each of these have a name size set, but then they have a reference UID. Um, this reference UID number actually sets a cross point value internally, but it will be this value here, um, which you can actually read all this, even though it may not be as easy to easy an explanation here in the help on each of these. Um, but basically what this does is you give it, this gives it a declaration. So anytime I want to use these items I'm referencing in the program, all I have to do is give this, use this UID variable right here. And what the program will then do is call back to the cross point symbol that is inside this module and pull all the information that we've initialized from it. So... For example, you'll see these have cross point equipment ID and reference UID like on this one on lighting. Well, the reference UID is the internal ID that it's going to call back to, what this value is set to. The equipment ID is actually the control ID. So we'll get into how that's relevant shortly. So references are pretty much structs, they hold data. Now, obviously, something has to be done with them. First, though, I tend to declare them all here as you can see. Um, and it's uh, always a good idea to document your cross point IDs as such so that there's a good idea of what uh, what they do. I like to use logic wave delays where you know I've got the human readable names and then just a description over here since it's commented out and doesn't do anything and um, if you want to see the format you can just read the extended comments and it gives the format for each of them but that just makes it easier to keep all the documentation in one place for these. So, now that you have those, um, let's look at a reference list like the room sources. Real quick, here. Touch panel, we have local room sources. Uh, this is a VD, VTC, so it's got local and remote sources, obviously. So if I come here, these are all the UIDs. Now, the way this relates is very simple. Um, this is used to build a smart graphics list. When the processor actually starts up, um, it runs a simple based for loop inside this module uh, and grabs all the information from each of these declarations, from the each of these declarations we made in here. It grabs the smart graphics ID, it grabs you know the name, all those things. And the reason it does that, uh, we're going to go over to our touch panel here, is if I go choose media for room 301, it can create this list. Now that list is actually dynamic. If I go choose media to share with remote location, 
create this list. In this case, I've had the the basically the same devices on it, but this is all this is dynamically generated. They were both the same actual sub page um, that those are. Uh, adding or removing a device on that list is actually very easy. So I'm just going to remove two of them. Um, let's do five and six here. There. Just keeping those referenced. So now I have eight. I'll just set my device count here to eight. So on local rooms, I'm just going to remove two of those. And then you can see how relatively easy it is to, to change the reference list. So everything uses that one UID. Um, zones use it. Uh, um, touch panels use it. Everything does. Wait for that to transfer. So continuing on here. Uh, as I was saying, zones. So on the zone side of things, we have another module here. At the beginning of its... Uh, of its initiation, it does actually the same thing. It will um, pull information off of these UIDs. One piece of uh, information it pulls off devices is what type of device they are. So if we go here, I can set the type right here. It's AV equipment, utility equipment, volume preset, lighting preset. These zones individually attract, uh, individually track all those types. I don't know why that just opened. That was weird. The zones individually track all those types. So, uh, so for example, you can have uh, the zone will track what piece of AV equipment you have open, what volume preset you have active, what lighting preset, shade preset, all that, and then you have. Um, five custom types here that you can implement as necessary and it will independently track those as well. So the reason that matters is you see you have your device output here. Well each of these devices uh, you can set it to use like the zone can tell the zone when you're declaring it. Do I want it to be an audio or video device, a video only device, an audio device only? Do I want it to have no effect on if the video is on or off? Leave it in its current state. Do I want it to turn both off? Etc. So it's a fairly useful setup from that point of view because then when you declare it here, whenever it's selected, the zone will automatically um, take actions based off those settings. If it is a device that requires video on, it will pulse video on. Um, also with audio on if you're doing it that way. As well, each zone independently keeps track of all the analog IDs, or the reference IDs, this number right here, that's selected for the audio video references, utility, volume, all those things. So you can track it on the back end very easily. All right, so we've uh, changed that. So we're gonna go to, I think, a mood media, and now you can see I only have eight on this list. And that's all I changed. I'm gonna go back over here, and I still have my full 10 here. Again, that's actually the same sub page. It is a uh, smart graphics button list, uh, a dynamic one, and it just is dynamically built by the touch panel module. Okay. So, this also extends to when you get down to things like the video switchers uh, using the UID based system. If I come down here to my AV switching, I have my switching module, and as I said, each zone tracks what is the active AV reference, what is the active lighting reference UID, what's the active um, volume preset reference UID, all those things. Um, you can use that because, as you can see, here it takes whatever the active AV reference ID is, compares it to the unique identifiers, or the UID references, 
um, that I get that are given here and then based off that sets the output this analog out value output for the video switching so basically whenever the um, zone sets a UID as this is what I have as an active source the video switching will automatically based off that analog value change um, you can obviously put in switching delays and you know in case you need them uh, you also have a similar setup here with device on and off management. As you can see, I have my AV reference ID again, and I just have my UIDs of devices that we actually control because these are selectable devices. Uh, there's a very useful setting on this. This has toggles and pulses. Uh, very useful setting that allows the device to be either turned off via all off or just to turn off when not in use. Okay. Um, one thing I believe documentation is very important so you'll see uh, like this this module which doesn't do much but it does it's just designed to give you a place to document custom signals because uh, I don't believe that you can think of everything in advance that will ever happen so pretty much all my modules have a set have a method to be customized let me just um, get, here we go you have a hundred custom digital analog and serial signals. So this module here is a zone module and it directly will interact with a touch panel module here. And these again connect to each other via cross point and they do this just by giving it the touch panel, telling the touch panel to connect to the zones uh, reference unique identifier. And on the touch panel as I said, you can have different um, cross point IDs or different different control methods uh, at the same time active per zone. Um, so these are all your different external cross point IDs. Um, what this basically does is whenever you select an AV source, it is going to connect uh, the control cross point 3 to whichever. Um, device equipment equipment cross point yeah equipment cross point for that piece of equipment so to give an example this is okay your cross point control symbols for devices this is my AV control cross point symbol and it's got pretty much pretty much everything you could need but it's also got the hundred extra let me go down here to the end so you can see it's three as the, the module shows if it uh, needs to connect to, for example, the conference camera, it will connect the uh, control ID 3 with cross point equipment ID 1001. And when it does that, um, let's leave this open, does that, the, I think I said conference camera? Well, it's like a document camera, because document cameras generally be to kind of show you. Here we go, Blu-ray. So there's various modules that are actually customized to each devices too. For example, this is a Blu-ray. This is still cross-point and still using the exact same symbol, um, exact same locations. Uh, you can actually see here the O36 means on the cross-point on an actual cross-point symbol output 36. But if we come over here to conference camera, it uses the general AV module instead. And you can start to see how things match up here. Uh, we've got our transport commands. So again, I is related to input, uh, like 16 in this case. So these two will connect to each other via cross point. Um, and then all those commands will, you know, uh, it'll send those through there. Um, the reason why this is useful is because let's take a situation like here where we have a local media device and a remote media device. And we need to control them very quickly, a uh, cycle between controlling them very quickly. I'm going to bring toolbox and debugger up here so you can see what's happening in the background. 
All right, so I'm going to choose my media. We're going to choose the Blu-ray for room 301. I'm going to share the, let's see, I want to share document camera with uh, our remote. Okay, so both of these devices, the Blu-ray and the camera controls, are cross-point based. And they actually both have, um, let's let debugger catch up here. They both actually um, use the exact same digital signals coming in. So when I select this, what's actually happening here is it's disconnecting the cross point uh, symbol from that equipment from the remote location document camera controls and connecting it to the Blu-ray. And then it's back. It, even though in debugger it seems to take a moment, if you time it, it happens in less than a second. So, and the reason it, it does that is because it's using, it's just swapping the UIDs and then using that to connect. Um, that's a pretty brief overview. I'm sure you'll have questions, which you're welcome to call and ask me about. But that's kind of my programming style is I try to, I really try to make it to where whenever you come back and work on something, it's fairly obvious where things go. Um... And it's pretty well documented as far as where things go. Uh, initially, this may seem like, wow, where's everything at? But, for example, with the conference camera or the document camera, let's do that. If I were to hit F2 on this UID, this gives me everything for it. If I look here, this tells me that it's on input 2 of my switcher. So I know it should be input 2 of the switcher. Um, this is its power on and off control. Or, sorry, this is its power on and off control. This is its... Uh, Video destination power input control, that's going to be for where it's in the projector, which that could be kind of commented better. Um, I can see here, based off the fact it's going to an equipment symbol zone, this is a zone that it goes to, and it's associated with that zone. These are two reference lists that it's on, so that it can be selected from those. This is the page feedback with it, which uh, we'll look at that module real quick. So the page feedback module, simply put, takes a UID value and associates it with a and associates it with a digital signal that will drive a page feedback uh, on the touch panel or do whatever you want with it but it takes these input values here these reference IDs and there should be I believe 16 of them or 15 sorry it takes these 15 reference input IDs and if any one of these whichever one last changes happens to match uh, one of these values, it will then put the appropriate page high. Um, and I cannot, you know, that, again, that just allows you to have one variable and then be able to see everything it's going to. Um, the idea being that if you have to use globals, which essentially all Crestron variables are globals, you should use them in a way that is very straightforward and analogs are the most efficient global there is um, in simple windows. So I think that about covers everything. Um, one thing I will say that I heavily try to emphasize, and if you look through this you'll notice, is I really try to keep all code separate. Um, for example, um, in the zones, or well, at least in touch panels, I would say there's not a signal from touch panels that doesn't either go through cross point or something like that. Yeah, it all goes through a path instead of jumping around folders to folders. I think your zones and devices should be separate as much as possible. Um, except for, of course, things like, you know, the projector, because it's got to talk to the zone. But in reality, your zone really shouldn't be talking to your Blu ray player, um, except for some specific specific things you're that should just be between the touch panel and that so that's a very brief overview if you have any questions feel free to call me um, um, again apologize about being tired I just wanted to get this done uh, and I had already worked today and I have to work Friday so I don't have a lot of time to do it on Thursday but hope you have a good morning or evening whenever you get to watch this and um, thank you for your time